Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me here today on this video where we're gonna be talking about how to simplify radicals. So we've got those tricky radical expressions that we need to be able to simplify. We're gonna talk about radical expressions with numbers, variables, and a mix of both together and some very special rules. So the first thing we really need to understand is the product property of square roots. You can put two square roots together. So the square root of A times the square root of B is equal to the square root of A times B or you can actually break them apart. The square root of whatever a and b together is equal to the square root of a times the square root of b. Now, let me actually make have this make sense for us. The square root of four times the square root of nine is equal to the square root of four times nine. Now, think about that. What's the square root of four? It's two, right? What's the square root of nine? three. What's four times nine? 36. What's the square root of 36? Six. Two times three is six. So you can take two radicals and multiply them together and they're going to be equal to the square root of that answer or you can break them apart. So I could say the square root of four times nine is equal to the square root of four times the square root of nine. So we have to know this property in order to be able to do everything going forward. And we also especially need to know our perfect squares. The biggest deal for this whole lesson, guys, is knowing our perfect squares. And the faster we have them memorized, the better. So our perfect squares, ready, are 1, 4, 9, 16. Where, where am I coming up with these numbers? Perfect squares, right? 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 4 is 16. 5 times 5 is 25, then the next one would be 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144. I mean, the list could go on forever. And I actually have here um, listed up to the first 25 perfect squares. Now, we're not going to need all of them, but you really want to make sure that, and again, go back to your elementary school facts, guys. When you learned all the way up to like let's say 12 times 12 was 144 and that was the biggest number ever you need to have those down pat 1 4 9 16 25 36 49 64 81 100 121 144 and the faster we know them the easier things are definitely going to be for sure so here's what i mean all of these numbers are not perfect squares i wouldn't ask you what's the square root of 12 and you're going to tell me some nice answer because it's not the square root of 9 is 3, the square root of 16 is 4, but the square root of 12 is going to be some decimal values. Now, before you grab your calculator, because this is not a calculator lesson, we are going to determine how to break apart 12 using one of those perfect squares, and it's got to be the greatest perfect square as well. So, if I look at the number 12, I know it's not one of my perfect squares. It's not 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, the list continues. But I want to figure out, what's the biggest perfect square that divides evenly into 12? So usually what I tell my students is, go to the number that's smaller than 12, so 9. Does 9 go into 12? No. Does 4 go into 12? Yes. 4 times what is 12? 3. So you can break apart radical 12 into two radicals by calling it radical four times radical three. Now, notice the four, the perfect square is in front, and I will always tell you to put that perfect square in front. What's the square root of four? It's two. Do we know the square root of three? No. This is actually what our answer looks like in simplified radical form. It's two radical three. Now, notice I didn't break up radical 12 into like radical six, radical two because we don't know the square root of six. We don't know the square root of two. It's always about a perfect square. Let's look at the next one, 27. Is 27 a perfect square? No, but what's the biggest perfect square that divides into 27? Is it 25? No, 16? No, nine, yes. Nine times what? Three. So radical 27 becomes radical nine, radical three. Again, perfect square first. What's the square root of nine? Three. Do we know the square root of three? Nope, so we just leave it. Radical 50. Biggest perfect square that goes into 50. Is it 49? No. Is it 36? No. Is it 25? Yep. So it's radical 25, radical 2, 
square root of 25 is 5, and we just leave the radical 2, guys, because we it becomes a decimal. 32. Now, 32 is one of those ones where you can get tricked if you don't start from the greatest number and work your way up. So biggest perfect square that goes into 32. Is it 25? No. Is it 16? Yes. 16 times 2. Square root of 16 is 4, and then it's just simply 4 radical 2. Now, often I'll have students, they look at 32, and they're like, ooh, 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 4 goes into 32. And so look what happens. They'll do radical 4, radical 8, because 4 times 8 is 32, right? The square root of 4 is 2, and then they'll be left with radical 8. But here's the deal. Radical 8 is not completely simplified, because look at that 8. Is there a perfect square that divides into 8? Yeah, it's 4. So this really now becomes 2, and if I break apart radical 8, it becomes radical 4 radical 2, which now means 2 times 2 radical 2, which then becomes 4 radical 2. Now notice, I got the exact same answer that I did here, but do you see how many more steps it took? So I strongly suggest whenever you're breaking apart a radical, 32, go to the number that's right below it, 25, and then work your way so that you always get the biggest perfect square that divides evenly. So now that you have a little glimpse as to how this would work, let's take a look at the next four. 200, biggest perfect square that goes into 200 is 100. So it's radical 100, radical 2. Square root of 100 is 10. Don't know the square root of 2, so we just leave it. 175, biggest perfect square that goes into 175 is 25. So it's radical 25, radical 7. Square root of 25 is 5, and then radical 7. I alternate between saying radical 7 and root 7. Just know that they mean the same thing for right now. Square root of 1,200. Now, 100 goes into 1,200. But think about it. 100 could not be the biggest because if I do 100 times 12, think about it. I could still break apart 12 because 4 goes into 12. So the biggest perfect square that goes into 1,200 is actually 400. Square root of 400 is 20, and then root 3. Last one, 675. Biggest perfect square is actually 225. Sometimes it also takes some testing out, guys. When you list all of your perfect squares, you may need to check quite a few of them. Um, radical 3, and so that really just becomes 15 radical 3. Now, the next thing we need to know is what happens when you simplify radicals that have variables um, in the radical. Now, any even exponent simply gets divided by 2. Because think about it, the square root of x squared is just x, and it would be x to the first power. So I would take an even exponent and I would cut it in half. Break apart any odd exponent by separating one base from the rest. And then if you ever go from an even to an odd exponent, you get absolute value bars when it gets simplified. This may sound kind of confusing, so bear with me. If I want to take the square root of x squared, it would be x to the first. But because I'm going from an even exponent of 2 to an odd exponent of 1, I have to put absolute value bars around that expression. That's because I need to make sure that the square root of x squared is a positive value. I can't take the square root of something and get a negative value. So I have to make sure I acknowledge that it's the absolute value of that value x. Now, the odd ones. Actually, let me skip to evens. Let's do those. Square root of x to the fourth, a nice even exponent. Half of 4 is 2. Now, I went from an even to an even. So when you take the square root of x to the fourth and you go from an even to an even, you don't need any absolute value bars. It's only when you go from even to an odd, just like we did here, 2 to a 1. Let's go to square root of x to the sixth. 6 is even. Half of 6 is 3. So notice, I'm going from an even 6 to an odd 3. That's going to be the absolute value bars. It's absolute value of x to the third. Now here's the deal. For the odd exponents, if I take the square root of x to the third, I'm not taking half of 3, guys. I'm not calling it 1.5. We don't work with exponents that way. Instead, we break one of those x's away from it. So x to the third, I'm going to subtract 1 from that 3, and I'm going to call it the square root of x squared and the square root of x to the first. You always just break 1 away. And the reason why is any odd number, when you take 1 away, it becomes even. And I can take half of 4, it's 2. Any odd number, if I take 1 away, it becomes even. And I can take half of 2. Any odd number like 7, if I take one of them away, I'm left with 6, and I can take half of 6. So that's what's happening here. If I've got the square root of x to the third, if I take one of those away, 
I can now take the square root of x squared, it's x, and then the square root of x is just the square root of x. Now, notice this didn't get any absolute value because it started odd. When you start odd, you don't need any absolute values at the end. You just leave it as is. It's only when you start even to odd, and I'm going to circle this. It's only when it starts even and goes to odd. That's when the absolute value bars happen. So now here, x to the fifth. I can't take half of five. So let me take one away from the five. So I'm going to call it the square root of x to the fourth times the square root of x. Square root of x to the fourth is just x squared, and then it's the square root of x. I know that's a lot of information. Let's see how we do with some practice problems here. Okay. Square root of x to the second, y to the eighth. So half, square root of x squared would be x to the first. I'm going from even to odd, so I get absolute value bars. Square root of y to the eighth would be y to the fourth. And I went from even to even, so I'm good. Now, square root of x to the third, it's an odd exponent. I got to do that thing where I break one away. I can do the square root of y to the sixth. It's y to the third. Now, I am going even to odd there, so I am going to need some absolute value bars. And then square root z. I can't do anything with that. It's just z to the first power. Square root of x squared is x. I'm going to bring this y to the third up front and put some absolute value bars around it. And what I want to show you is anything that's still under the radical gets grouped together. So this radical x and this radical z go together to become radical xz. They like, can just join under the same house together. Square root of x to the fourth is x squared, y to the fifth. So I have to break this apart. I've got to write it as the square root of y to the fourth times the square root of y to the first. So now this is x squared, y squared, square root y. Notice the moment I take the square root of something, the square root symbol is gone, right? So the square root of y to the fourth just becomes y squared. I can't take the square root of y to the first, so I just leave it as the square root of y. Next one. Square root of x, all right, square root of y to the fourth would be y to the second, and then I've got square root z. Pretty easy problem, guys, so it's y to the second. Remember, anything under the radical gets joined under together. x to the seventh, so can't take the square root of an odd, so we break one away, so it's x to the sixth times x to the first. y to the fifth, got to break one away. y to the fourth times y to the first. Square root of x to the sixth is x to the third, and then it's just square root x. Square root of y to the fourth would be y to the second, square root y. Anything not in the radical goes up front in alphabetical order. Anything under the radical gets grouped together. Last one, square root of x. Then we've got y to the ninth, so we've got to break one apart. So it's y to the eighth, y to the first. This is still square root of x. Square root of y to the eighth becomes y to the fourth. Can't do anything with square root of y. And so now my final answer is y to the fourth, square root x, y. Not too bad. Last one, we're gonna have some numbers and variables mixed in together. Process is still the same, but now we just have to join forces basically. Okay, so 40, biggest perfect square that goes into 40 is four. So this becomes radical four, radical 10. Square root of a squared is a. Square root of b to the eighth is b to the fourth. Square root of four is two. This a to the first is gonna get brought up front because I went from even to odd. b to the fourth is also not in the radical. The only thing in the radical is this radical 10 and that gets sent to the end. 18, biggest perfect square that goes into 18 is nine. So this becomes radical nine, radical two. I've got to break apart x to the third to become square root of x squared, square root of x to the first. Square root of y to the fourth is y to the second. Square root of nine is three, so I've got three radical two. Square root of x squared is x, then I've got the square root of x, y to the second. Anything out of the radical goes up front, anything in the radical gets grouped together. Last two. Biggest perfect square that goes into 90 is 9, so it's radical 9, radical 10. Square root of a squared is a, then I've just got square root b. This becomes 3, that a, I went from even to odd, so it gets the absolute value bars, and then anything under the radical gets grouped together. Last one, biggest perfect square that goes into 28 is 4, so it's radical 4, radical 7. 
Square root of x to the 8th is x to the 4th. y to the 9th, I break 1 apart from it. So now this becomes 2 radical 7, x to the 4th. I have an error there. Got to fix that up. Square root of y to the 8th is y to the 4th. And then just square root y. And so my final answer is 2x to the 4th. All math teachers make mistakes. y to the 4th and then square root of 7y. I hope this video was helpful for you. It's a lot of brand new information, so rewatch as much as you need. Thank you for watching. Bye.